praise. Hallelujah. So many doors you've opened. So many ways you made. So many times you've healed me. You've been better than good. Say, so many doors. So many ways. So many times. You've been better than good to me. So many doors. So many ways. So many times. You've been better than good to me. So many doors. So many ways. So many times. You've been better than good to me.
say to the Lord, come on, say it, thank you, Lord. Come on, say to your God, come on, he woke you up this morning. He started you on your way. Come on, come on, tell him thank you. Oh, say thank you, Lord. Sometimes, God, I don't know why you chose me, you found me, you picked me, you selected me, you kept me. And I can't declare what you've done for anybody else. But I reverence what you have done in my life. Thank you. But you've been better than good to me. this God we declare our adoration and love that has kept us that has delivered us that has healed us and been there for us we declare your goodness now, God, as we prepare to dive into your word, I pray now that you would humble this, your man servant. Saturate me afresh. That you would allow this word to inspect. 
every nook and cranny of our soul that you would allow this word to dissect, cut out anything that is not like you, that you would allow this word, oh God, to penetrate hearts, minds, and souls of those that would adhere to it. And when you do it, <laughs> when you do it, we make this declaration of when, God, because your word does not go out void and it does not come back void. So when you do it, we promise to give your name glory, honor, and praise. It is in the matchless, marvelous, and the majestical name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ, we all do pray. The people of God said, Amen. Come on, put your hands together and give God praise. If you would join me in the gospel according to Luke, Luke 17, 20 through 21. Hallelujah. Luke 17, 20 through 21. Would you stand for the reverence and reading of the word of God? My Bible reads like this. Once on being asked by the Pharisees when the kingdom of God would come, Jesus replied, the coming of the kingdom of God is not something that can be observed. Nor will people say, here it is or there it is. Because the kingdom of God is in your midst. Another version reads, the kingdom of God is within you. The grass wither, the flower fades, but the word of God will last for eternity. You may be seated in the presence of God. I really love the Lord. I really love the Lord. I I really love the 
showing up is the declaration that he gave me the victory that's why I love him I love him some folks are so I really love these spaces and places the Lord they have Jesus being asked this question. When will the kingdom of God come? And I found, Reggie, that there are people that have so much foresight that they have no insight. so busy trying to predict what is to come that they can't appreciate the moment that they're in. Uh, I noticed that in today's particular society with social media, everybody has to put all of their business Bobby Brown would say every little step they take on social media. And I'm wondering, as much as I appreciate pictures and memories, how is it that you can truly enjoy the moment if you're so busy trying to capture it? For I've found that some moments aren't meant to be captured. They're simply meant to be experienced. I think this is better than the first one, Andre. Jesus raises 
this question. The Pharisees raised this question, excuse me, to Jesus. When uh, is the kingdom of God going to come? They've raised the right question uh, to the right person. And Jesus replies like this. The coming of the kingdom of God is not something that can be observed. Uh, some people are attempting uh, to see instead of experience. Jesus lets them know that the kingdom of God is not something that you see, but the kingdom of God is something that you experience. So let me give you a theological insight of how I kind of process that Renee, I would prescribe heaven as living daily in the presence of God. And I would describe hell as living daily without the presence of God. So with this surmise theology, Reggie, you can experience heaven on earth. This surmised theology, you could also be living in hell right now. Y'all ain't gonna help me preach, okay. Now, Jesus says it's not something that you observe. So the first thing the text shows us is that, that when, when, if we're going to be kingdom fit, we have to understand that there is no need for a preview. Uh, that the kingdom of God is something that can only be experienced and conceived through our faith. And faith uh, is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. And so when you ask the question, when will the kingdom of God come? It simply is not a when question. It's a where question. It's a why question. It's a how question. And Jesus lets them know this ain't something you going to be able to see coming. Can I let you know some of the best things that I've ever experienced were the things that I did not see coming but simply overwhelm me. That's what a blessing is. The Bible declares that the blessings of the Lord will overtake you. Uh, that means you never see it coming uh, but it is something that you experience uh, and when you truly have faith uh, and trust in God uh, you don't necessarily need a preview of what to come because you trust that he will do exactly what he said. I, I understand what I'm seeing now, but I know what he said. I know I understand what I'm hoping for, but I know what he said. Jesus says that this ain't something you can see coming because a lot of people will attempt to try to get themselves together just in time so that they can get the benefits of the blessing. Jesus lets us know this ain't something uh, that I can give you a specific day and time about, uh, but you can and you cannot observe. The next thing Jesus says, he says, nor will people say, here it is and there it is. So not only will you not be all able to observe it, but Jesus lets us know it ain't going to be obvious. Tell somebody, I got to dig a little deep. Uh, the problem that we have in today's new age church, Sister Trustee, is that people want to be able to point it out. It's obvious. And we have a lot of surface dwelling Christians that ain't never took the time to go into the depth of what God has for them. They're living on the surface. And that's why when Jesus tells them, tells the disciples as they get in the boat, he tells them to launch out unto the deep because there's only, there are some things that only will be acquired through the deep things of God. Okay, 
Apostle Paul raises this question, how long will you be in sin that grace may abound? Not only is it not uh, observed, but it ain't, it ain't that obvious because there's some things that's going to acquire you to be a little deep in God. There's some things that if you want to get the fullness of the kingdom, you're going to have to let go of the petty stuff and decide to live and dig deep. You're going to have to get off the surface of things and go into the depths of God. You're going to have to get off the milk and get on to the meat so that God can grow you up in him. Ain't nothing worse in my perspective than an older person that ain't nothing but a babe in Christ. Christ. Uh, you've been in church 40 years uh, and you still mad over petty stuff. Uh, the devil is a lie. Uh, I need for you to grow up in God uh, or get out to church. Uh, one of the two because the reality is uh, you should not be sitting uh, under sound doctrine uh, and strong word uh, and still immature in Christ. There's no need for a preview because it's not something you can observe and it's not obvious. And some of us want it so plain Jane, so thrown in front of you that we don't want to go through anything, we don't want to experience anything. Can I let you know it's through my hurt and my pain and my struggle and my trial that I'm strengthened in my relationship with God. I can't, woo, I can't grow up unless I go through. Part of you've been blaming the devil for this the whole time and the devil ain't got nothing to do with this. God has allowed these vicissitudes to, for you to experience in your life so you would go through them so he can grow you up. But every time you try to get out of jail free, you miss the growing moment that God has for you. Grow up and go through it. And that's what you, eh, that's what you got to start telling people in this season. Grow up. I ain't got time for that. Grow up. I'm not arguing with you. Grow up. I'm not dealing with this pettiness. Grow up. Stop hanging out on the playground at recess. Grow up. Jesus says, y'all. Y'all, no, watch this. These are the Pharisees. These are the keepers of the law. These are the teachers of the deep. These are the teachers of the people in the church. And they're asking Jesus these very ignorant questions. Jesus says, because the kingdom of God is in your midst. There's no need for a preview. The second thing the text tells us, and I'm almost done, is prepare for what's to come. Jesus lets us know. You want to know when it's coming. Jesus says it's already here. Okay, so in the words of my sister, because I'm a little deep, uh, let, me, let me unpack that for you. They're asking Jesus, when is the kingdom of God going to come? Church folk don't know when to shout. Let me give it to you again. They're asking Jesus, when is the kingdom of God going to come? One more time for the people in the back. Let me, let me, let me give, I mean, I don't, I, don't, I don't know how to make this any simpler. How do you ask the kingdom when the kingdom is coming? Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the light. No man come to the Father kingdom but by me. Maybe, maybe that's not good for you. Let me, let me take you back to Genesis. The Bible says, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth kingdom. How is it that you're going to ask the kingdom when the kingdom is coming? And his response is that the kingdom is standing in in your midst. So we've got to make sure that we are prepared for what's to come because what is to come already is. You so busy trying to get ready that you don't recognize what's already present. Uh, 
I'm getting trouble for this. I'm going to go ahead and jump out there, Reggie. My wife does that sometimes. Uh, she'll go to the grocery store and buy food without looking in the freezer to see what's there. When I ask her why she didn't just look in the freezer, uh, her response to me is, well, that would have taken some time to thaw out. And I wanted it to be ready to cook when I came down. All right, listen, hear, hear me out. My piece to her was, we don't have to buy what we already have if we know in advance what we're trying to get. Listen, you don't have to worry about what is to come when you recognize what you already got. Y'all ain't gonna help me in this place. Listen, y'all making it hard. I'm gonna send y'all back home and let you watch it on Facebook. Listen, let me, one more time. You don't have to worry about what's coming when you recognize what God has already given you in Jesus. If they would have taken the time uh, instead of trying to catch him up to get caught up in him, uh, they would have understood that they were standing in the presence of the kingdom. Last point, I'm gone. 1055, amen. No need for a preview, DD. We got to prepare for what's to come. And lastly, we have to take it personal. Jesus says, because the kingdom of God, it's in your midst. Or some interpretations say, it's inside of you. The word your as I stated earlier, um, is a possessive pronoun, which means it, the kingdom is now tangible to anybody that desires it. <laughs> you, you, you ain't got to be a pastor or a preacher to have the kingdom. Uh, you ain't got to be a Pharisee or Sadducee to have the kingdom. You ain't got to be a deacon or an usher to have the kingdom. You ain't got to be in church. All of y'all that rushing back to the sanctuary, you ain't got to be in church to have the kingdom. Jesus lets us know that the kingdom is within you. I'm reminded of a commercial one. And I watch, I watch a little bit of TV. I don't watch a lot. I just I used to watch a lot of TV when I was young. I don't have time. The saints keep me so busy. I don't have time to watch TV now. But there was a commercial about a spaghetti sauce called Prego. And uh, they went to the store and they bought the Prego spaghetti sauce and they dumped it in the pot. And on this side was the man cooking the Prego spaghetti sauce and on the other side, it was his mother. Old Sicilian mother. Didn't believe in going to the store and buying spaghetti sauce in a jar. And she's over there and she's cutting up onions and cutting up mushrooms and slicing and dicing tomato and peer, piercing and, and peeling garlic and preparing for the spaghetti sauce. And every time she asked him, she said, does it have onions? And he would say, it's in there. Well, what about mushrooms? He said, it's in there. Well, what about tomatoes? It's, it's, it's in there. What, what, about, what about garlic? I bet you ain't got no crushed garlic in there. The man would say, it's in there. Prego was symbolic of how the kingdom of God resides in us. So while you're waiting for healing, I, I, I came to let you know it's in there. While you're waiting... Uh, for a manifested blessing. I, I, I stopped by here this morning to let you know it's in there. While you're waiting for deliverance to take place in your life, I want you to know it's in there. That God put the kingdom of God inside of you so that 
something on the inside would start working on the outside. You ought to tell your neighbor, I can't see it. And sometimes you might not be able to feel it, but I declare and decree, just like Prago, it's in there. That's what the kingdom of God is. It's not a feeling. It's not something you see, but it's a knowing down on the inside of you that is in there. That's why David said, Thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against God because David knew that if he had something inside of him that when the adversities of life came on the outside there was sustainability inside of him you ought to tell tell your neighbor it's inside of you that the kingdom of God it surely is dwelling inside of you that's why the Bible says no weapon formed against you shall prosper. You see the weapons on the outside can kill what's on the inside. That's why the Bible says that though he slay me yet will I trust him because you can kill the outside but you can't touch the inside. You ought to tell somebody it's in there. When they doubt what you can do, you tell them it's in there. When they don't trust the situation, you tell them it's in there. That when Jesus, Jesus died on Calvary's cross, he shed his blood to cover me on the inside which meant I had to become kingdom fit tell somebody I'm getting kingdom fit I know it's not about where I am but God 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 is taking me somewhere that I haven't seen somewhere that ears haven't heard somewhere that can't be observed somewhere that ain't that obvious and I know I don't look like much to you but I'm so glad so glad I'm God's apple in his eye to you, but I'm so glad, so glad God doesn't treat me the way my sins deserve, and so there's no need for a preview, there's no need for me to try to see it, but I'm going to prepare for what is to come, I heard said I heard the psalmist say you gotta see it before you see it or you never will see it well let me help you what Cason says you gotta be it before you see it or you never will become it see I've learned that if I'm going to be kingdom fit I gotta line up with the whole counsel of God if I'm going to be kingdom fit, I got to learn how to forgive quickly and forget even faster. If I'm going to be kingdom fit, I got to be slow to take offense and ready for reconciliation. Y'all ain't going to help me. Is there anybody in the building that's declaring today, I got to get fit for the season I'm going into. I gotta get ready for the season that God 
God is calling me to. I understand that my season ain't gonna shift until I get kingdom fit. I gotta get fit for the shift. Tell somebody a shift is coming, and when the shift comes, I'm gonna be ready. You better get a good look at me now Because when I say when my ship comes I'm gonna look, I'm gonna act, I'm gonna walk I'm gonna talk brand new They gonna say he think he knew I'm gonna say no baby of your failure to be obedient. Lay aside. Let me take you strawberry lane real quick. Lay aside her weight. Let me take you to Ballantine Boulevard. Her weight. Take you to Park Place in Huntersville, Irway. Come across the water to Hampton, the Rip Rat Road, Irway. Ride on up 95 to Sycamore Street in Petersburg, Irway. That so easily besets you. That ain't on God, that's on you. To get fit for the shift of God in your life. Now everybody's not going to get fit. Which means everybody ain't going to shift. But for those of you that desire a shift. I challenge you to get fit for the kingdom. For those of you that desire what eyes haven't seen and what ears haven't heard and what hasn't entered into the hearts of men. Now that ain't for everybody. Some folks already in heaven. They already in heaven with Jesus right now. But for those of us that desire to experience heaven on earth, I challenge you to shift your life and get fit. For the kingdom of God is at hand. It's here. It's now. Don't you miss heaven waiting to go to heaven. God wants, eh, God wants you to experience heaven now so you'll know how to act when you get there. You ever been around somebody ain't never been nowhere before? Do you take them somewhere? They don't know what side they cup of glass is on. They don't know what fork to start with and end with. 
They looking at the butter because it's swirled up, thinking it's something they can eat tangibly. Come on, y'all ain't gonna talk to me. You ever been somewhere with somebody? I never forget, Brian might remember this. I took my cousin. She wanted to go. I like to go to nice chop houses. Didi, I like to go. My favorite is the Riverstone Chop House. They ought to pay for an endorsement on this. It's gonna be on TV. I'll get checked for this. So I took her to a chop house that's no longer open, James, and we sat down uh, at the chop house. This is a nice chop house. You know, the type of chop house that they bring the steaks. You pick what cut of meat you want. They bring it to your table, Miss Trusty. You can pick what cut. I mean, pork chops, two, three inches thick. I mean, nice chop house. So we get there. She decides she orders a steak. So the waiter says, well, how do you want your steak? Well, so, so they cook our steak well. When they bring it out to us, she's, mm, this is, this is, I need to cook harder than this. I said, well, do you want to taste the steak or do you want to taste the grill? Because I need, to, <laughs> if they cook it any harder, you're going to be tasting the grill. You ain't going to be tasting the steak. Send it back. She brings it back. Everybody has their food. We're sitting there. And. She asked the waiter, uh, excuse me, you got any A1? We had a five-star chop house. And you asking for A1? <laughs> Get fit for the kingdom. So that when you experience heaven, you ain't running around there trying to pull the streets of gold blocks up out the ground. You ain't trying to break in somebody else's mansion. Like, I need you to get fit. I, I need you to get fit on this side. <laughs> so you know how to act. You know, you... You're looking at your robe. You're like, mm, this don't fit like I like it. I need my robe to be a little tighter. That, that ain't, I need you to experience. <laughs> can you take this up past my knee? I can, I can hear some of y'all saints now. You're going to miss the kingdom. There's no ratchetness in the kingdom. Only righteousness. Y'all ain't going to help me preach. There's no boastfulness in the kingdom only humility there are no mean and rude and nasty people I say that for the people that's watching because I know that's none of you all here there are no mean and rude and nasty people in the kingdom amen let's get fit for the kingdom standing all over the building Let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we pray now. First of all, if there's anybody here whose heart is not transformed by your blood and by your love, we ask that you will come into their heart. Make them new, new, brand new. God, we pray now for anybody in broken relationship with you that you would fix what was broken creating us a clean heart, renewing us a right spirit. Blot out all of our transgressions. Forgive us of our sins. And God, we ask, third and finally, help us get kingdom fit. Mind, spirit, emotion, body, finance. Help us to lay aside every weight the weight of unforgiveness the weight of overeating the weight of compulsion the weight of lack of patience the weight of depression the weight of low self esteem all of the weights that beset us so that we can run this kingdom race ensuring that we are kingdom fit now may the Lord bless you. May the Lord keep you. 
May the Lord make the Lord's face and countenance shine upon you. And may the Lord grant you peace. Peace that you no longer worry or be weary. Peace that you may rest through the night. May the blessed God of peace, Jehovah Shalom, grant you God's peace. In Jesus' name, amen. Hey, I love you. There's absolutely nothing you can do about it. Don't let anything or anybody steal your joy. Don't let anything or anybody disturb your peace. Have a great day on purpose, and we'll see you in the morning. God bless. Go in peace. Serve the master. Amen. Hey, God bless you, and thank you for taking the time to tune in to the Bethany Experience Virtual Worship. Uh, we pray that something was said or done in this moment to help you along life's journey. Now, if you desire to support the Bethany Baptist Church, there are three ways in which you can do it. First, you can give via Givelify. All you have to do is download the Givelify app and look for Bethany Baptist Church. Secondly, you can log on to our website, www.experiencebethany.com. And lastly, you can stop by the church, 2587 Campostella Road in the beautiful city of Chesapeake. God bless you. Heaven smile upon you and we'll see you in the morning.